Uh, hey, welcome to part 2 of the Canizaro reaction mechanism tutorial. Uh, in the last uh, video, we looked at the mechanism of Canizaro and we figured that uh, the mechanism clearly tells us that the species that acts as the hydride donor finally forms the acid, gets oxidized to the acid, while the one which uh, accepts the hydride is getting reduced to the primary alcohol. Now, when we take uh, formaldehyde only, this is going to behave as a self canizaro reaction. One molecule of formaldehyde uh, uh, gets oxidized and the other gets reduced. So, this is the scenario. Two formaldehyde reacts with concentrated NaOH to make sure that it acts as a nucleophile. One gets oxidized and the other gets reduced. Now, in this screencast, we are basically going to look at various examples of Canizaro reaction, some exceptions, and uh, also cross Canizaro, self Canizaro, and intramolecular Canizaro reaction. So, this is one of the examples of self Canizaro. We can also take uh, benzaldehyde. Uh, as you notice in benzaldehyde, you do possess an alpha carbon, but there is no alpha hydrogen here. So, two molecules of benzaldehyde are going to react to form uh, benzoate ion and benzyl alcohol. Now sometimes you can have a aldehyde and a, an aldehyde with alpha hydrogen but not showing aldol, showing canizaro instead. Now look at this one. This is 2-methyl propanol. In this you will notice that this is the alpha carbon. It contains alpha hydrogen. Now in spite of this, this shows a major product of canizaro rather than aldol and that's for two reasons. Reason number one is this edge is very low on acidic strength because it has got two methyl groups which are going to act as electron releasing source and electron releasing groups will always decrease the acidic strength. So the carbon anion formed here is going to be very less stable. Second problem is, when this carbonyl is formed, its ability to act as a nucleophile is always low because if you remember, nucleophiles have to be less hindered. Otherwise, their ability to act as a nucleophile, to ability to act as a, a nucleophile on an electrophilic site like a carbon is going to be low because they are hindered. So you got to have less hindrance there. So such a molecule, in spite of having an alpha hydrogen, shows Canizaro reaction. So this is one of the exceptions uh, which do not show aldol but show Canizaro. So here when we put NaOH and especially when we put the concentrated one to ensure that it acts as a nucleophile then we'll get a major product of Canizaro. So one molecule of this aldehyde gets oxidized to the carboxylate ion and the other to the alcohol. So 2-methylpropanol becomes 2-methylpropanoate and 2 methyl 1-propanol and as stated the above exception is due to the fact that uh, the alpha carbon ion is less in stability and attack of this carbon ion to the carbonyl carbon is difficult because of the steady crowding. Now the next uh, situation that we're going to look at is the cross canizaro. So what happens when you have two different aldehydes? Well this is what happens. When two different aldehydes are used either both without alpha hydrogens or one without and the other with a hindered alpha carbon, uh, then the major product is decided in the following manner. Now, this is very important that we need to understand this. First, we should look for the static hindrance. If both aldehydes are hindered differently, then the one with less hindrance will be attacked by the hydroxide ion in step one. Subsequently, it is this which will donate the hydride and become the carboxylate ion. The other aldehyde will get produced. Let's understand this with an example. So I'm going to take benzaldehyde and formaldehyde. Now notice here that uh, in this case, this particular carbonyl compound is hindered because of this pH, the phenyl group, whereas this carbon has only a hydrogen attached. So more hindrance on this carbon than on this carbon. So this is hindered. And according to this logic, first we should look for the steering hindrance. If both aldehydes are hindered differently, then the one with, now let's mark this, the one with less hindrance 
will be attacked by the hydroxide ion in step 1. So hydroxide is going to attack the less hindered one. So first look for the difference in hindrance. Less hindrance, more hydroxide attack. So hydroxide attacks here. So it is this which eventually will give the hydride. And the wherever hydroxide attacks first, that will get oxidized. So this is going to get oxidized. This will be oxidized because hydroxide attacks this. And this will be reduced. So the product should be formate ion and benzyl alcohol and that's what you get. Now what happens if the hindrance is similar? If the hindrance is similar, let's uh, take this off. If the hindrance is similar, then the aldehyde which has higher tendency to release a hydride ion will be oxidized and the one the other one will be reduced. Electron raising groups increase hydride ion release while withdrawing group decrease the ability to release the hydride ion. Now what does this mean? Okay, let's look at these two molecules. Now notice that both have similar hindrances. Both are attached to a phenyl group. So equal amount of hindrance. So when the hindrance is similar, then you look for the aldehyde which has a higher tendency to release the hydride. Now which of these two has a higher tendency to release the hydride? Obviously the one in which electrons are being released towards the hydride. So you notice there's a methyl group here. This is releasing electrons. The electrons will eventually get released and this will help in the hydride removal. Whereas relative to this, this has less tendency to remove the hydride. So the hindrances are similar. Look for the one which has releasing groups. More releasing groups will release hydride. Therefore, the one that can release the hydride will get oxidized. So this is what will get oxidized. And this will be reduced. So here the product is, I'm going to get uh, the paramethyl benzoatein and the other one becoming the alcohol. So that's how you decide in the case of a cross cancer. Then we have an example of uh, intramolecular cancer. So if you take glyoxyl for example and treat it with any OH, it undergoes intramolecular cancer. Now what is that? Notice this. Now you notice that uh, the hydroxide is going to attack here. This pi bond is going to go up. You get this. Now it comes back. Hydride is going to release. But this hydride is not going to attack another molecule. It is going to attack the same, carb uh, same molecules, another carbon. carbon. So this hydride attacks this because intramolecular distances are going to be lower than intermolecular distances. So the chances that this will go and attack another molecule of uh, glyoxyl is less. So this is what we get. So O minus comes back. It goes, this attacks, this goes up and intramolecular hydride shift. It's a, just similar to the carbonyman hydride shift, except that it is not a carbonyman shift. And then the proton transfer, and we call this intramolecular proton transfer, IMPE. And uh, so one aldehyde part gets oxidized, the other one gets reduced. Intramolecular cancer. Something similar happens when you use phenylglyoxyl. In phenylglyoxyl, there is uh, only one carbon on which the hydroxide can attack because this has pH. This do doesn't have H. This has a pH. This has the H. So hydroxide is going to attack here. And um, so hydroxide attacks here like this. And this goes up and uh, we get something similar to this. Then this is going to come back. Hydride leaves, attacks the other carbon. Pi 1 goes to O. And uh, you get again IMPE. So you get 2 hydroxy 2 phenyl ethanoate. So this is the example of intramolecular Canizaro reaction. So that is the end of the video of Canizaro reaction mechanism tutorial. Thanks for watching.